Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the cognitive reflection test, which we did this week. There were three questions on that test. One dealt with a bat and a ball. The other one dealt with making widgets. And the third one dealt with lily pads on a pond. Let's start off with the bat and ball question. It's a simple question. It simply says, hey, the bat and the ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat costs a dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Well, the obvious answer is not right. And why is the obvious answer not right? Well, it appears to be 10 cents. After all, when you add 10 cents to a dollar for the bat, you get a dollar and 10 cents, which seems to add up to the number we need, right? But that can't be right. Why? Well, remember, the bat doesn't cost a dollar. It costs a dollar more than the ball. So if the ball were 10 cents, the bat would be a dollar and 10 cents. And the combined costs of the two would be a dollar ten. I'm sorry, a dollar twenty. That is a dollar ten plus the ten cent uh, ball. Well, that that's a problem, right? That has to be a problem because the bat and the ball are supposed to only cost a dollar and ten cents in total. This was given in the problem. Now the right answer is really not the intuitive answer. Uh, it has to be that the ball costs five cents. Why is that? Well, because now that would make the bat priced at a dollar five, since it's supposed to be a dollar more than the price of the ball. Now, when you add the cost of the two items together, the dollar five for the bat, the five cents of the ball, you get a dollar ten, which is precisely the total that is given in the problem at the very beginning. So the question is, why did this happen? It's really just a cognitive bias. And Daniel Kinnaman theorized that the human brain operates on system one and system two, but uses these systems differently depending upon the situation. And in his book, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, which I highly recommend, he describes system one as the brain's fast, automatic, intuitive approach. And system two is the mind's slower, analytical mode where reason dominates. So don't feel bad. If you answered 10 cents, not a problem. Most people, even very intelligent people, give the same answer. So what is happening is that you're trying to answer the question quickly, and your intuition provides you with this answer. It has to do really with availability bias. The information that's available is what was presented to you. And the truth is that if you were told to take your time and verify your answer, probably next to no one would get the answer wrong. Because now system two would be kicking in. Now the widget question is very similar. It says if it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, how many minutes would it take a hundred machines to make a hundred widgets? Well, again, it's not the obvious answer. If you answered a hundred, you're in good company, but the overwhelming majority of people provided this answer, but this answer just can't be right, right? Question is, why? Well, think about it this way. Think about sharpening pencils. Think about a situation where one person is sharpening a pencil with an ordinary pencil sharpener, and it takes them five seconds to sharpen it. And now imagine that you have five people with five pencil sharpeners. How long would it take them to sharpen the five pencils? Well, of course, it would take five seconds. That's pretty easy to see. And so far, you're thinking, this isn't helpful because this sounds just like the answer that you gave, right? But even if we had a hundred people with a hundred pencil sharpeners, it would still only take five seconds for these pencils to be sharpened if they're all equally productive. So the widget problem is really no different. And that's why the answer has to be five minutes and not a hundred minutes. So why did we get this wrong? Well, we get this problem wrong for the simple reason that we're operating on system one thinking again. We're relying on our intuition and some availability bias. It looks like a nice pattern, five machines, five widgets, five minutes. Therefore, 100 machines, 100 widgets, 100 minutes. But of course, now we know the answer isn't right, or that answer isn't right. But again, if we're told to take our time, to verify and test out our answer, most people would answer correctly that it would still only take five minutes, right? Now for the grand finale, we have the lily pad question. I really enjoy this question. In a lake, there's a patch of lily pads, and every day the patch doubles in size. 
If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how many days would it take for the patch to cover just half of the lake? Well, drum roll, please. Okay, if you answered 24 days, again, you're in good company. It's an intuitive answer, but it is spectacularly wrong. Why? Well, if you'd taken a little bit more time to verify the answer, you would realize that it can't be right. So ask yourself this question. What would happen on day 25? Well, the answer is that the number of lily pads would double in size. But that is a problem. Why? Well, because on day 25, that would mean that the previously half-filled pond of lily pads would now be completely full of lily pads. But that wasn't supposed to happen until day 48. So the right answer is not the intuitive answer. If you answered 47, you are right, but you are also in the minority among respondents. So congratulations. And trust me, the first time I saw this problem, I answered 24. I did not choose 47. In fact, I was fussing at myself that I didn't get it right. So why is this answer right? Well, if on day 47, the pond is half filled with, with lilies, it means the next day the pond will be completely filled with lilies. And of course, that would be day 48, which is what the question originally stated as a given. In any event, I hope this video helped and I hope you enjoyed the survey. And if you have any other questions, of course, don't hesitate to let me know. Take care and best wishes.